Your life again, Sue Ann. Yay! <laughs> With a better internet connection. Better okay. internet connection. Thank yeah. you. Last mile internet for our uh, <laughs> unthrottled, unlimited, I'm never thinking. You guys make us look good out here in the country. Internet is uh, tough to find sometimes. It's true. So we're doing, welcome back everybody. Uh, welcome back. I don't know where you're coming from <laughs> or, or where we're going to. Uh, just having some fun with all this. Um, you know, it seems like the lights are turning back on. So I don't know how much longer we'll, we'll do this, but, um, but it's kind of fun. So we're doing Where's the Beef Sliders, and none of them are going to have beef. And uh, today is lamb. I'm going to do a few of these because we have a few employees here today. Usually, well, for months, it's been car and myself, <laughs> and now there's, like, people <laughs> and customers. Yeah. So I thought, let's do a few of these today, and, uh, and we'll see how much longer we keep doing these, too. But, um, so Where's the Beef Sliders today is lamb, and uh, you know what the cool part was of doing lamb? Is that there's so many ways to do a lamb slider. It's pretty exciting. It was hard for you to uh, pick a recipe. It was, and I had a tough time figuring out how to do this. So, um, like, what was the right way to do it? I had previously made one. Okay, you're being a bit challenging. I, so I want to get them in and, like, smoosh them. So, like, in total contact with the grill. And, uh, and like, right wherever it's going to be grilling, it kind of, like, conforming to... Wait, he <laughs> goes with him. You stay together. Don't argue. Flashback from my mother talking to Drew and I. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so these ones are kind of like a, a bit of a Greek flair to them. But as it's going through, it's like you, know, you go Moroccan with uh, like some cayenne pepper and onion and mint and cumin and coriander, smoked with paprika, and then put like, some tzatziki sauce on top. Um, go Mediterranean with some oregano and parsley, garlic, and some red peppers. Um, so this is great. We're gonna use a feta cheese, um, a feta cheese topping on it. But inside of it, um, we have uh, other flavors too. They're somewhat Greek. It's a little bit fusion. So. Yeah, it's your Greek fusion burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, go Australian and uh, do some rosemary and thyme and shallots, and then on top some melted brie. Bricks is commenting in the background there, and he's saying all of them sound perfect. <laughs> so, and the cool part was is it also makes them like seasonal for basically what time of year you're doing it. So like think of Christmas putting red and wine, uh, red and green fixings on top of it. Or Easter with um, like some spring vegetables and mint, like a mint yogurt sauce. So so today we're, yeah, oh, autumn, right, into autumn time, do like some roasted veggies and um, some like more cinnamon and, and nutmeg type of flavors. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Lamb. Ooh, tortier sliders. <gasps> oh, tortier oh sliders. we got to so work on that. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. She's on it for Tia Slider. Ooh, yeah, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? So, and then, and then being uh, lamb, I mean, you can go as cooked as you want with this, too. So, you have a, a bit of fun. So, okay, so while it's cooking, um, okay, I'm going to tell you how I made mine. So, okay, I'm going to go through all the different uh, recipes here. What did I do? Because it, it changed several. Oh, here are. Okay, so Greek style burgers. So, basically, this lamb has, um, so for every pound of lamb. Um, there is a quarter cup of finely chopped shallots, two cloves of garlic that was minced, three tablespoons of freshly chopped mint, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a uh, half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, and, um, and, then, and then the lamb. And, and then, so it smells really, really good. It smells really good, eh? Mm. And then, so, so kind of like Greek style there. And so if it's Greek, then you gotta do some feta on it. So, I'll just slide over here. I did like a, a feta sauce. And this feta, I just crumbled feta. I bought it and chopped up really fine. And then put, um, so let's say, this is like 200 grams of feta cheese with three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise, two teaspoons of herbe de Provence. And I'm lucky to have a homemade one from a friend of mine, Jim Blanche, who uh, makes his own herbe de Provence. Six tablespoons chopped chives from the garden, which lucky to have a garden of chives going crazy there. Um, <laughs> Three tablespoons of lemon juice, one clove of garlic, and just mix it all together until it's smooth. And it's basically just make this as chunky as you want. I wanted this like a little bit of texture still to the, the feta, so I left it like that. That is a personal recipe. I just made that one up myself. So, and then I thought this is kind of fusion, and I put a little Canadiana with it. And so on top is um, going to go some dried cranberries. But the dried cranberries, I made a simple syrup first. I was a little somewhat um, personal as well. So I did one cup of sugar with um, a third of a cup of, of water and two tablespoons of orange juice. 
brought that up, up to a boil with um, with one jalapeno finely diced mm -hmm. to get the heat, and then I just dumped in the rest of the tin of uh, of, uh, of jalapeno of um, dried cranberries and let that cook for about uh, five minutes, and then just kind of like left it on the stove overnight. Stirred it every now and then to make sure all that yumminess got to the top. So I think this is all out. Oh yeah. Believe in the pan. Believe in the pan. Yep. Put it in and leave it. Don't yep. do anything. Because that's, that's where all the flavor is, right? It was all that contact with the grill. And, um, sorry, you know what they do with this too? I put in two eggs as a blender. Ah, and that's right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, one egg. I need two pounds. So one egg for a pound of, um, of uh, lamb. So, okay, so for people who are the work, staff, put that back in. So, let's take a look. So, let's talk wine. What are we going to drink with this? <laughs> it's all lovely and everything, but, uh, okay, so some of you have been before, and um, what I did with the, the chestnut tree 2017 is I uh, did a bit of a trial and had some fun. So put some in barrels that had previously held brandy in it, some that previously had bourbon in it, and they were always sold as a set. You had, it was $98 for the set, and you had to buy them both together. Well, somehow, I think we drank too much of one and not the other yeah. one. <laughs> so we got seven bottles of just the brandy one left. The bourbon is totally sold out. There's not a single bottle of it left. And so I thought it would be fun today just to have one of the, well, it was eight bottles. Now there's seven. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, what's cool is, so it's the end of the run. There's only seven left. So is this on my website? No, I will put it on the website this afternoon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or you know what? Just, Okay. Make it a special thing. Like, give us a call. Okay. 877 566 1719 and tell us that way because there's only seven of them. And so if you watch the video, you get you get free access into, to purchasing it. So Ooh. Um, once the seven are gone. Our friend Dale, do you remember Dale? He came in last week. He's from BC and he was visiting oh. his, his mom and yes. his sister. Yeah, yeah. He says that cab franc was fantastic. Thank you, Dale. Thanks, Dale. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so what's cool about this is. You have all the body and texture because this wine was aged in a typical barrel for a year beforehand. Then it was transferred over into the barrel that previously had brandy in it. And so you get right, like all the spice, the cardamom, the richness, the, the, um, the black peppers. And um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get that, and you get that layer of brandy on top of it. So here you almost get like, um, mm, like rosemary and, and, but, and also uh, like the real little brandy notes to it, yeah. I think. So um, there's like a, a stewed, stewed fruit to it that's been you know, stewed brandy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> How long did it spend in the brandy barrel? I forget. Yeah, it's about a year. Oh, 14 okay. months, 14 months okay. in the brandy barrel. So, so a year in regular barrel, French or American or both? Yeah, probably both. Yeah. And then and then take it out and put it in the brandy barrel. So um, it's actually 15.1% um, alcohol. So it gets some body and texture yeah. to it and some heat. So. So it would go really well because like that that extra stewed fruit note paired with this with the um, with these beautiful uh, um, plumped up cranberries, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Mm. I'm totally sure that was like <laughs> good because that's just quality control, Sue Ann. Well, you know, I, I never drink my own wine, and um, there's a reason for that. <laughs> so, because we get what's called cellar palate as a winemaker, yeah. if you drink too much of your own wine, then you only start to believe that your own wines are good, and you don't like to drink any other people's wines. Yeah. Right? So, well, that's so, the that's the benchmark then for you, and that'll screw up how you like it screws up your objectivity. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, definitely. And so it's cool to um, to taste it again. It's like, oh yeah, it, it is how I remember. So. Okay, so I'm just being a little extra fancy here. I thought I'd serve these on these um, like cool round nan rounds, mm -hmm. full wheat nan rounds, because like I mean, sliders are cool, but sometimes it's hard in the grocery store, especially in Vineland, to find slider buns, mm -hmm. right? So, all right, these are you know what the the juice is just starting to run clear. I can see right there. It's starting to run clear. Oh yeah. Yeah. They don't want to push down on too much. That's all the goodness, right? Yeah. All right. Take one of those out. All right. You could drain this on, um, could drain it on some uh, paper towels first, maybe. But uh, I say why? <laughs> <laughs> because like, okay, there's a little bit of the uh, feta cheese on top oh, of that. You could actually yeah. know it. Do some feta on both sides, even of it. Yeah. You even just eat it just like this. You don't even have to put it on a bun. Just put the cucumbers on the bottom and then there the, you go. the um, burger on top. For those of us who are low carb. <laughs> those are low carb, yeah. <laughs> 
And actually, I, I would probably toast those rounds too beforehand. Actually, that looks like, perfect just like that. So, somebody is looking for his uh, medication for uh, for um, arthritis and went through withdrawal, I think. So, <laughs> he's chosen. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna put this on top or not? I think I. I'm not going to. No, like it's too like pretty that. the way it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Scar. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> the best. Oh, a fancy knife, too. Oh, Star. <laughs> Handsome and handy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going right into that. Let's see what the middle looks like here. It was interesting. Um, the, the lamb came from uh, Costco. And you had just a little bit of pink left in the middle there. That's mm -hmm. exactly how you like your, uh, your rack of lamb or your, your uh, leg of lamb as well, right? So I think that is just perfect. So get a little bit of all the bits in there. So a little bit of the feta and the cucumber on the bottom for some crunch. Because I think that's what the perfect thing you know, building a proper burger is thinking like, what's the sweet, what's the savory, what's the crunchy bit, what's the neutral bit. So in this case, the neutral is the, the bun, the crunch is the cucumber, the sweet is the, the cranberry, the savory is going to come from the, the lamb and the feta cheese. So all right, I'm going See, in. It's just Oops. like winemaking. It's all about balance. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cranberries? Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> and you get the, and so much earthiness too from it being lamb as well, yeah. right? So you get the earthy texture and there's all the spices in that too. So, um, you know, it's perfect. So where's the beef sliders continue yep. with, uh, where's the beef? I don't know where it is. We're not <laughs> doing beef. We're doing lamb. Last week we did, um, the salmon burger. So good. And then next week we're going to do, I'm not sure, are we turkey or sweet potato? I'm not sure, we're going to do one week of a sweet potato, one week of a, of a Oh turkey. yeah, because the sweet potato black bean quinoa thing that you did mm. last year was really good. It was so, so delicious. And we should it's shout out to the vegetarians among us. We you should, know. Yes, we should. Because yeah, you know. they get to have wine too. They do, they do. <laughs> so the last week, folks, for uh, free shipping in Ontario, six bottles of uh, purchasing and it's complimentary shipping. That's going to end Friday at, 11, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight. 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 Midnight, July 10th is over. And uh, then next week with luck, the tent is up. We're going to do alfresco tasting out in the event tent in the Moyer Marquis. Um, with luck, we'll have some charcuterie boards selling as well. So it's all it's going to be a crazy week. All this is going to come together. If anyone's keen on picking up a paintbrush to help paint some things, <laughs> just show up. I got I have got lots to do. So uh, <laughs> I, I can put you to use. So the, the, you know, it's no. going to be craft week at Sue Ann's Shop. It's craft week. It's craft week. <laughs> Water fountain is coming out. The golf cart is coming out. It's uh, the lights Beautiful. are turning on. So uh, in a careful, controlled way. So you feel safe. We feel safe. And everybody wins. Everybody wins. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. Make the lamb burgers. Recipes are online. Um, love on your lives. Okay. Be well, folks. <laughs>